All right, we are going to uh, kind of start off our fraction stuff here with our subtraction with borrowing. Uh, we've already done some different things with fractions, but this is something that I would like to work on here. In the past, I've only really showed one way to do this, but I think that enough people have showed me this other way, enough students have come up with this, that I think that this would be a viable, acceptable method to use. So uh, well, I'm going to show you two ways to do this. You pick the one that makes the most sense to you. Okay, and I'll show you both ways for every problem. First thing we got to start with is always our common denominators. So let's get it that way. So if we have 5 and a fourth and 2 and 2 thirds, 3 and 4, 12 is probably the smallest number we could use there. You could use 24, but 12, it's always best to pick the smallest one because you have uh, the least amount of reducing to do at the end. So I know to get 12, that would be a times 3 and a times 3. And that would be a times 4, so we have to times the top by 4 also. So now we're going to have 5 and 3 twelfths take away 2 and 8 twelfths. Okay. The way I've showed you in the past is to do some borrowing, which works out pretty slick. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, but the thing is, you really have to understand how a fraction works to do that, which you all should know that. But um, let's just go through it. If I'm going to borrow here, obviously I need more up here, okay? So I'm going to take away from the 5 a 4, okay? We just took away one hole, so we have to put one hole with this fraction. If we're going to take it from here, we're going to put it here. Everybody knows that one hole for a fraction is the top number is the same as the bottom number. So one hole for a fraction that has 12 at the bottom is going to be 12 twelfths. So if I remove this one whole or this 12 twelfths from the 5, uh, I'm going to put it with this fraction. 12 twelfths and 3 twelfths now becomes 12 plus 3, which is 15 twelfths. This 15 twelfths is just a combination of the 3 twelfths we started with and the 12 twelfths or the whole that we took off of this. Now the problem is pretty simple. 4 minus 2 is 2. Uh, 15 minus 8 is 7 we've got 2 and 7 eighths for our answer. No reducing necessary there. Now, I'm going to show you a different way to do this. Let's go back to what we had. We had 4 and 3 twelfths. We had 2 and 8 twelfths. Here's what I like to do with this. This is another way to do it. I like to do 4 minus 2 is 2. 3 minus 8 is actually negative 5. Let me go back over here first. I apologize. That would be 7 twelfths. Um, negative five twelfths. Okay? So now all I'm going to do is, and this might make sense to some of you guys, it might not make sense. I'm going to count backwards from two, from two holes, um, negative five twelfths. So for instance, uh, the first one would be one and eleven twelfths. That would be one. Taking off negative one. Uh, 1 and 10 twelfths would be taken off negative 2. I'm just counting backwards is basically what I'm doing. 1 and 9 twelfths would be our negative 3, taken off 3. I'll have to roll up here. 1 and 8 twelfths would be our taken off 4. And then finally, 1 and 7 twelfths would be our taken off 5. So our answer to this one would also be 1 and 7 twelfths. Alright, 14 and 4 fifths minus 5 and 5 sixths. I know that 5 sixths is bigger than 4 fifths. Um, if I had a pizza cut into 6 slices and I got 5 of the pieces, I'm going to get more pizza than if I do it this way. Uh, if I cut it into 5 and only get 4 of the pieces. So that's going to tell me we have to borrow because we're taking away more than what we have. So let's get the common denominators first. Uh, 5 and 6, we'd probably want to use 30. Okay, So that would be times 6, times 6, that would be times 5, and times 5. So that leaves me with 30 here, uh, and 24 there. And then over here, it looks like I have 25 and 30. We're really close to being able to do that, but not quite. Okay. So, let's do our borrowing. If I borrow, 14 is now 13. I took one off of there. Now we got to put one with our fraction because if we took something off, we need to put it somewhere. 
and 1 in this case for a fraction, my bottom number is 30, is going to be 30 thirtieths. So if I take this whole and I put it with the 24, okay, 30 thirtieths, which is my whole, plus the 24 thirtieths that I had before, 30 plus 24, 54. Okay. Now I just have to subtract. 13 minus 5 is going to be, I believe, 8. And then 54 minus 25, uh, let's see, 54, 44, 34, that would be 29. 29 30ths. 8 and 29 thirtieths. Okay. Now, if we did it the other way, and I still kept my, what did we have before? We had 14 and 24 thirtieths. Uh, and then I took away my 5 and 25 thirtieths. Okay. This one actually becomes pretty easy. If I do the 14 minus 5, I get 14 minus 5 is 9. 24 minus 25 is negative 1. So I have 9 and negative 1 thirtieths. So I just have to count backwards from 9, negative 1 thirtieth, which would be 8 And 29 thirtieths. If I count backwards one from nine, uh, my next one down would be eight and 29 thirtieths. Because if I went up one from eight and 29 thirtieths, I'd get back to nine holes. If that makes sense to you, use it, because I think it's pretty easy to do. If it doesn't, use the other method. All right, last example we'll do before I let you try some on your own here 63 and a half minus no holes, six tenths. Okay, let's get our common denominators. We're going to have 63, looks like, we might as well just use 10 here, would be my, I mean, you could use 20, I see a lot of people would probably do that. I'm just going to use 10, because I know 2 and 10 both are going to 10. So that's going to be times 5 and times 5. To get to 10, that's just times 1 and times 1. Okay. So, looks like we've got 10 and 5 here. Take away 10 times 1, that's just going to stay exactly the same. Whenever you times something by 1, it's going to stay the same. So now our problem is we can't do 5 minus 6, so we need to do some borrowing. So if we're going to do it the first way, my 63 becomes a 62. I need to take my hole off of here and put it with the fraction. My one hole here is going to be 10 out of 10. 10 tenths would be one hole for this problem. So if I put my 10 tenths with my 5 tenths that I already have, my one hole here with the fraction I have, uh, that's going to be 10 plus 5, which is going to be 15. Now I can just do the problem. 62 minus nothing over here is just 62. 15 minus 6 is going to be 9 and 10. 62 and 9 tenths. Let's try it the other way. If I had 63 and it was, I believe, 5 tenths, take away 6 tenths. If I subtracted these, I get 63 and negative one tenth. If I go backwards one here, my next one down, since I'm dealing with tenths, is going to be nine. So it's going to be 62 and nine tenths after I take off that negative one. Here's the four square problems that I would like you to try out. I don't care which method you use to put in your notebook. Uh, just pick one of the two that we did and stick with it. I will warn you that one, no, nah, I'm not going to tell you. We'll see what you come up with here, okay? So I would pause this, try these problems, and then watch the video to see how you did. All right, let's start with the first one here. Four and four-sevenths minus one and three-fourths. Let's get a common denominator. Um, oops. Uh, I would say we better go with 28 times 4 times 4 times 7 times 7. Okay, let's do that. 4 times 4 would be 16, and then we've got 28. Take away 21, 28. Okay, perfect. Can't do this, so we're going to have to do some borrowing. 4 becomes a 3. Our whole here is 28. So that means we need to put 28 28 with the 16. 28 plus 16, 
uh, would be, let's see, 16, 26, 36, 36 plus 8, I believe, would be 44. So that would give us 44 28s. Now we can do the problem. Uh, looks like 3 minus 1 would be 2. 44 minus 21. That looks like that would be 23 28s. So we got 2 and 23 28s. If you did it the other way, you would have gone back to our 4 and 16 28s. Take away our 1 and 21 28s. Done 4 minus 1 is 3. 16 minus 21 is negative 5. Uh, negative 5 28s. So I would want to count backwards um, by negative 5s here. By negative 5. It's one at a time. So my first one would be, I believe, 2 and 27 28s. That would be negative 1. 2 and 26 28s, that would be negative 2. 2 and 25 28s, that would be negative 3. 2 and 24 28s would be negative 2. Oops, I'm going the wrong way, negative 4, sorry. And then we need one more, which is going to be our answer that we got right here. Because after 24, if we went down, would be 23. All right, next one, let's do this one here. Um, let's get our common denominators. Looks like, um, I don't know what you use. I'm hoping you, I'm hoping you use, forgot to put my two here. I'm hoping you use 16 for a common denominator. That would make this a whole lot easier. If not, you're going to have some reducing probably to do in the end for sure. So I'm going to keep it at 16. So that would be times 2 and times 2. Now, if you didn't use 16, that's okay. You're just going to have to reduce a little bit more in the end. Uh, so that would be 16, and my top would be 12. And then over here, of course, would just be, we want to keep it the same because it's already 16, so times 1 and times 1 is going to be 16 and 14. Going to need to do a little borrowing on this one for sure. 10 becomes 9. One hole in this situation is going to be 16 sixteenths, so I need to put my 16 sixteenths uh, with my 12, my 16 sixteenths is one hole that I took off of here. We want to put it on here. Uh, 16 and 12, I think, is 28. Now I can do my problem. 9 minus 2 is 7. 28 minus 14 is also 14. Uh, don't stop here. We need to do some reduction here, some reducing. So if I divide top and bottom both by 2, Looks like I've got 7 and 7 eighths. Good. That would be our answer. Now, if we wanted to work the other way, and I just noticed something we could have done on this one, we could have actually had a common denominator of 8 and divided this by 2 to start with and got 7 eighths here to start with would be a good way to do it. But if you did it that way, good for you because it was probably faster. Now, the other way to do this, let's go back to what we had before. Uh, I believe we had 10 and 12 sixteenths take away 2 and 14 sixteenths. If I just do this straight up, 10 minus 2 is 8, 12 minus 14 is negative 2 sixteenths. Okay. Now I need to work backwards negative 2 from 8. Okay. So my next one down would be, and my whole is 16, remember, so that's going to be 7 and 15 sixteenths. That would be taking off 1 16th. Taking off another 16th would be 7 and 14 sixteenths. Now, remember, that's not your answer. That's what we get, but we still have to reduce it. So even if we reduce this one, dividing by 2 is still going to give us an answer of 7 eighths.